we need to look at the anatomy of this joint, okay? Uh, this is really the very important slide here. If you see uh, that in a normal x-ray, in a normal foot, you see that the first metatarsal, the second metatarsal base, and the third metatarsal base, you can see that the second metatarsal base over here is recessed uh, about eight millimeter as compared to the first metatarsal, uh, and four millimeter as compared to the third metatarsal. So you can see that this is really sort of uh, uh, wedged in between the two metatarsals. So the second metatarsal base is wedged between the two metatarsals. This gives us a bit of bony stability to the base of second metatarsal because it is actually articulating with five bones. So the base of the first, the three cuneiforms, and the base of the third. So that's the five bones. It's wedged in between, and that gives really good bony stability to this interface. And that really is the key of why the second metatarsal base is the main thing injured in a list frank injury, despite being so stable in a bony articulation. Uh, so we uh, normally uh, we can divide list frank joints into three columns, and that's called the column theory. Basically, the first column is comprises just the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform. The second uh, one, the second one you can see is the second and the third uh, metatarsals and the two cuneiforms form the middle column. And the lateral column is basically formed by the mobile fourth and fifth metatarsals. So if you look at the columns, we should know what are the movements that are there at the TMT joints. And this is really in, an important concept. So if you look at the medial column, if you look at the tarsal metatarsal joint, it only has about three millimeter movement in the dorsal plantar plane. Okay, so it has some movement and that allows it to move, you know, in the dorsal plantar and a bit abduction adduction as well, but mainly in the dorsal plantar region. Uh, now look at the middle column. The middle column has only 0.6 mm movement in the sagittal plane. Really, no movement at all. Okay. And the x-ray that we showed you initially, okay, that had a one to two millimeter step. That means that for that step to form, there has been a significant injury to this joint for even a one millimeter step to have formed at the middle column. So, uh, which gives us to the concept that, you know, even one millimeter of uh, displacement at the middle column is not really acceptable because it tells us that there has been a significant injury to that column which should not be ignored and treated lightly. If you look at the lateral column, you can see there's a massive difference. Uh, there is 13 millimeter of sagittal plane movement. So this is the most mobile column. It is the shock absorbing column of the foot and again that lends itself to the concept of not rigidly fixing the lateral column bones at all. So we never rigidly fix the lateral column. It's only the medial and the middle column that we can rigidly fix with surgery. The lateral column never has to be rigidly fixed because if we fix that rigidly, like with either cross screws or with bridging plates, we will lose that 13 millimeter movement, which is really important for the foot to function as a shock absorbing structure. So uh, again, very, very important thing. So if you just take, keep this in mind.